Welcome to tutorial 2 demonstrating the bird's eye paver estimation tool. In this example we will create a 25 foot by 40 foot patio around a swimming pool, then a path leading to a fire pit area. Let's start by first naming and saving this project. When drawing square or rectangular shapes, we can use the Snap to Grid option in the top right corner of the graph paper. This option automatically snaps the line to one foot increments. To draw our first patio, we will use the square drawing tool, although the straight tool could also be used. After clicking on the start point, we can drag the square shape out to the dimensions we desire. To create a 25 foot by 40 foot patio area, we pull the opposite corner down and then away. As before, we then select a paver style for this shape. And then add two layers of borders for the perimeter. To create the swimming pool area, we now use the object or blocking drawing tools, which are blue, to create shapes that are subtracted from our paver areas. This could be a swimming pool, grill island, or any other structure that will be taking up space within the paver area. We could draw our pool with either the straight line or the square shape. Since I know the pool is 12 feet by 30 feet, it is easiest to draw it using the square tool. Because we are working in a smaller space, we can use the orange zoom in button to get a closer look. As we draw the shape, you can see the dimensions inside as we expand it. We can now label the pool by selecting this shape, then clicking on label. We can also change the color here as well. Any object which is a non-paver area can also have a border. In this case, we will add a border around the pool. This could also be a pool coping if one is included as a border. Now I'll demonstrate how to draw a path that is meandering from the pool area to a fire pit. One of the great features of this tool is that when you draw shapes that are overlapping, it automatically subtracts the overlapped area. This way, you don't have to be exact when joining shapes together. In other words, Nothing has to be perfect. The bird's eye paver tool takes care of it. In this case, we can start drawing our path using the straight line tool from anywhere inside the pool patio. Once we extend it out, we can right click and change our line to curve or select the curve from the green tool menu. Using the curve tool, we can create a serpentine shape. Once we get to the end of our path, we right click again and select Convert to Path. It then prompts us to input the path width, which the user inputs in either feet or meters. Again, as with the other paver areas and objects, we can add a border and label it. Now we can use the circle drawing tool to create a fire pit area at the end of our path. We can click anywhere on the page to start drawing. By holding down the left mouse button, you can drag the circle shape out. As you can see, the circle radius is dynamically shown in the center as you expand it out. When the desired radius is achieved, let go and of the left click button. Again, we select the paver and border you want to use. These could be any different combination from what we've originally selected. By clicking anywhere within the circle, you can move it to the location it belongs. As mentioned, you can overlap shapes such as the circle over the path. It doesn't have to be exact. Once you've moved the circle into position, you can right click on it and either bring to top or send to bottom. In this case, it makes sense to select bring to top. This feature allows the overlap shape to move above or below the conflicting shape. In the quantity calculation, it will also subtract the overlapped quantities automatically. 
We can now go to our blue object tools and select the circle to represent a Rivercrest fire pit in the middle of this circular paver area. Again, we can draw the fire pit object anywhere, then drag it into the patio. By doing this, the area of the fire pit will be subtracted from the area of the patio. We can also put a border around any object, as mentioned previously. Now that we have our plan done, we can quickly label each paver area and object area. To enhance our visual of this project, there are a couple of simple objects that can be dropped in, such as plants and rocks. Keep in mind, these are just provided to generally represent where some planting may go, and are not meant as realistic depictions of the planting scheme. To insert a plant, select the plant icon, and you can then click anywhere on the drawing. You can continue dropping more plants in as desired. When you are done, click the select button up in the green drawing tools menu to cancel the function. Like any object, we can go back to any individual plant, select it, then modify the size using the handles provided, or move it around. Once we have done this, we can select Quick Estimate and see our quantities. Each paver and border area are summarized and total material bundles are provided. We can then select Create Report, which generates a complete report you can print or save as a PDF. Finally, the Print Plan to PDF function allows the user to create a PDF plan of their project that will be to scale. In many cases, a landscape plan may already exist. In the next tutorial, we will show you how to simply import a PDF or any image file into the Paver Estimation tool so you can trace the existing landscape plan. Thanks for watching tutorial two for the Bird's Eye Paver Estimation tool by Reesey Stone Systems.